Hello, good evening, and welcome from the Shankill Leisure Centre in Belfast on Valentine's Night, no less. And tonight sees the hosting of the quarterfinals of the NI Women's Senior Futsal League. We've got four great games to look forward to. The first of which sees Cliftonville Ladies taking on Carn Money Ladies. Carn Money have came back into the competition. Unfortunately, it's Jimmy Corner weren't able to field the team. Second up match, it's in terms of Sparta Belfast, now taking on the ladies of Ballamacash Young Ladies. Third up, St Oliver Plunkett were hoping to cause an upset against Linfield Ladies. And finally, but by no means least, we see Crusader Strikers and they'll take on the ladies of Lawrence. So, four cracking quarterfinals to look forward to. Shoot with plenty of goals. Let's head over and see how it all turned out. Here's highlights. After earning a late reprieve following the withdrawal of Chimney Corner ladies from the competition, a very young Carn Money Athletic side found themselves up against it when they took on current Section C champions Cliftonville ladies. The North Belfast side didn't take too long to stamp their cup winning credentials on this one as Megan Wetherall hit an early three goal salvo to open a commanding lead. Her money to their credit wouldn't lie down and fought back thanks to these two well stricken strikes from Kelly Gurley. Any hopes of an upset, however, were soon quashed as Weatherall added her fourth and then Rebecca Matthews made it 5 2 with this effort. Weatherall then made it 6 2. And when Rachel McCollum crashed this effort home to make it 7 2, it was as good as game over. Matthews went on to make it 8, and then Amber Dam struck it in on the act with this goal to make it 9. And after that, the goals continued to flow despite a plucky performance from the Carn Money youngsters. Full time score Cliff Ladies 13, Carn Money Athletic 2. Megan, first of all, congratulations on making the semi-finals of the competition. Must be well pleased with that. Yeah, um, happy enough. Like we've reached the semi-final the past two years now, and got defeated. So we're hoping to push on and do better this year. Karen Money obviously were a very young side tonight. You went three and up, and it looked like it was going to be an absolute tank to a certain extent. But then, to their credit, they got a couple of goals back. Give you a bit of a fright. Yeah, they've a lot of good young players there. I think they'll do well in the future. Obviously, fair play to them for turning up and playing against us. Like so, happy enough to get the win as well. And six goals for yourself. I'm not complaining about that. And I understand the net. Yeah, um, I just thought at the end I'd go in and do something new. Like no one's had a player in that shit, although I didn't do the fly keeper, which probably would have been even better. But you still came out and scored a penalty even when you're in that. Yeah, I had to take that one. You know, just to add another points. one, get the sixth one. So. Finally, I hear you had a bit of luck this week. You won a copy of Football Manager for an IFA competition, is that right? Yeah, uh, a Cliftonville player getting a signed copy by Stephen Baxter, so that's a bit of a weird one, but happy enough. Game two on our quarterfinals night saw a well organised Ballamacash young lady side determined to take the scalp of their more senior opponents. However, their task became a lot harder when this well-worked move was finished off by Kerry Beatty to give Sparta the lead. Palamakash, however, remained resolute and levelled the score through this neat finish from Molly Moore. A great strike from Sam Kelly then restored the Sparta lead, and when the game moved into the second period of play, they began to take control of the game, as firstly Amy Lee Peachy made it 3-1 with this great strike, and then Jenna McKerney was on hand to finish well to make it 4 1. Alan McCash did put a goal back through this great shot into the corner of the net from Melissa Orr, but then when Kelly struck twice more, including this effort to make it 6 2, the game was done. Full time score Sparta Belfast 6, Alan McCash Young Ladies 2. Anything but a Linfield win in this one was always going to be a major upset, but when SOP took the lead through this great effort from Chelsea Edwards, and then shortly afterwards the same player added the second, could there be a major shock about to happen? Mm -hmm. 
than feel as you'd expect from champion Zane Settled and found their rhythm with debutant Cora Morgan reducing the deficit. And this was followed by these two strikes from Rebecca Bassett to give Linfield the lead. Morgan got her second and third to ensure Linfield led 5 2 at half time, and then in the second half, a Linfield landslide ensued. Morgan got her fourth. And then Abby McGee then ran the full length of the pitch to make it seven. And despite SOP pulling one back through Nicky Pauling, two more goals from Morgan, two from Louise McFrederick, and another from Bassett, ensured Linfield cruised home. Full time score St Oliver Plunkett 3, Linfield Ladies 12. It was a bit of a shock to the system going two goals down. Yeah, definitely. We weren't ready for it, but to be honest, they did come out all guns blazing and we weren't expecting it, but they did give us a good game and it was tough, but we're glad to get into the semi final. This is your debut in foot, so I understand. And yeah. six goals in your debut is not a bad start. No, it's all right, like, to be honest. But I'm just glad we got the, the win, really. Although it did take a while for them to open their account in our final game of the night, it was Favourites Crusaders Strikers who took the lead in this one, through this great passing movement, which was eventually finished by Rachel McLaren. Two goals earned by hotshot Jessica Ray made it 3-0 before the interval, and when the match resumed, a fourth goal from McLaren ensured there was no way back for the girls from Enver Park. Ray completed her hat-trick with a strike, and Lou Lauren got a consolation goal from Holly Robinson. It was Crusader Strikers who made their way into the semi-final draw. Full-time score. Crusader Strikers 5, Lauren Ladies 1. Heather, first of all, congratulations on making the semi finals. You must be well pleased. Yeah, um, obviously, we won it last year, so it'd be nice to go the whole way again this year, at least the final. Um, we're a bit of a younger team this year, so um, we're trying to rotate them all through. It's been a different team every week. I think that was probably the best futsal we played tonight, so um, it was good to get through the semis. Don't take it as an insult, but you're obviously the more senior player in the team. You must be very proud of the girls and how well they're doing. Yeah, definitely. I think um, younger players' movement has improved. Futsal's really good for that. Um, and once they started to move the ball a bit quicker throughout the weeks, they've definitely got a lot better at it. So yeah, it's good. They're taking all the points on board and they're getting better. The draw for this season's semi-finals took place directly after the quarter-finals and it produced two mouth-watering ties to look forward to, as North Belfast rivals Crusader Strikers were drawn to play Cliftonville Ladies, whilst Sparta Belfast were drawn to play Lindfield Ladies. Those games will take place on Friday the 21st of February, first game starting at 7.45pm. So that completes this week's coverage of the NI Women's Futsal League. Well done all four winners tonight and we look forward to seeing them all again next week in the semi-finals as the competition enters its finale. So till next week, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you all again then. Till then, it's bye for now.